them or um, book something for some height um, might be useful to you in some of our postures today. So let's get started. <clears throat> So I'm outside, clearly. I'm sure that's obvious. <laughs> and uh, I just want to apologize in advance if there's background noises. I hope they're not too distracting. But trust me, it's far better than me being inside the house and having the background noises of my children. So they are in the house and let's hope that they stay there and uh, we will get started. So just make your way into a comfortable position. Um, on your bottom, so coming into a comfortable seated Sukhasana here. So just crossing the legs in whatever way is comfortable for you, whether one ankle in front of the other, just sitting in a traditional cross-legged position. You're welcome to elevate your hips um, if that's most comfortable for you. That can help for long time sitting. We won't be sitting for too long this morning. Um, <clears throat> referred to um, my love of essential oils and most especially incorporating them into my yoga practice, but I do. Um, essential oils stimulate the olfactory system, which is connected to the limbic system of the brain. So when we inhale it, the essential oils in through our nose, the olfactory system travels up. So that's kind of at the bridge of your nose and it, it's connected directly to the limbic system in your brain, which is referred to, to as the emotional switchboard of the brain. So the limbic system is the part of our brain that controls functioning of our autonomic nervous system. Um, so think fight, flight, or freeze versus rest and digest. So the rest and digest or parasympathetic nervous system is that's where we want to be hanging out. Um, and obviously we're not always able to get there. So adding essential oil to your yoga practice can help to accelerate and enhance the effects of your yoga. So yoga is such a beautiful blessing in terms of supporting that parasympathetic nervous system, anchoring us down, really bringing us into that rest and digest, um, and adding essential oils can really help to kind of amplify that. And it can also help to create what are called scent memories. So if you experience a moment of presence on your yoga mat, using the essential oil when you're off your yoga mat can also help you to recall that moment of presence. So I just wanted to give you that little kind of blurb and myself today for my practice, I'm going to use a blend called Console, which contains frankincense, ylang ylang, patchouli, labdanum, sandalwood, rose, and osmanthus. Um, I've been using Console a lot lately, most especially in the time that we're in in this world. Um, it's really helpful for grief, sorrow, and despair. It's a beautiful blend. It smells really nice, but really supportive of um, emotional health and well-being and um, personally, I'm feeling really heavy um, with everything that's happening in the world, and um, this blend is just really supportive. So I'm going to apply just one drop to the palm of my hand, rubbing my hands together and just taking a few deep breaths. So wherever you are today, just begin to settle in, bring weight into your hips and knees, anchoring your body here. Just making your way into stillness. Take any fidgets or adjustments that you need. Allow for your hands to come to rest on your knees if that's comfortable for you. Palms down for some grounding if that's what you're feeling called to, or maybe flipping your palms towards the sky if you're needing a bit of energy here. I guess that'll depend just exactly where you're at in this moment. So just taking a moment here to tune in, ask yourself what you need. And uh, listen to the answer. Begin to establish a connection to your breath here. So you might just begin by noticing just simply that it's there. And 
as you become more aware of your breath, beginning to deepen your inhales and extend your exhales. Begin to expand your inhales all the way into your lower abdomen. Notice how your belly fills and kind of inflates out with air as you expand your inhale all the way down to the base of your abdomen. Into your side ribs here, expanding into your lower and upper back, just really connecting to your belly breath here, fully expanding on your inhale. Fill your lungs. And think about extending your exhale even longer than your inhale if possible here. Exhaling fully, think about exhaling all the way to the very, very root of your body. Perhaps even engaging through your mula bandha, your root block, as you fully exhale. Imagine squeezing out stale air that perhaps has been in there, I don't know, since yesterday or earlier today. Guiding the mind, softening through the face, softening through the shoulders. Before we get started today, I'll just ask you to take responsibility for your practice today. I obviously can't see you, we're not with each other, so I just ask for you to really tune in and connect to the sensations that you feel throughout your practice today. Take breaks when needed, either seated in Sukhasana as we are together now, lying down on your back in Shavasana, or taking a break in child's pose taking breaks whenever you feel called and joining us when you feel ready. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed here if they are. We're gently opening your eyes. And just drawing the soles of your feet to touch. So we'll open our practice today with Vata Konasana, our butterfly posture. Bring the soles of your feet to touch. Wrap your thumb around the inside arch of your foot, fingers wrap around the outside. Draw your heels towards your pelvis, just notice what that's like. You might take a moment here to gently massage the arch of your foot. Just sending yourself some divine love here. Checking in. Find some pressure to the various pressure points that exist on your feet. Maybe taking it into the toes. And whenever you feel ready, just take an inhale, draw the crown of your head towards the sky, draw your abdomen in, sit up tall here for a moment. And as you exhale, begin to hinge forward, relaxing through the head, neck and shoulders. Gaze falls towards the earth, rounding forward. Maintain a connection to your breath here. Activate through your core, begin to draw yourself up through center. You're welcome to keep your feet in butterfly or return to a cross-legged position here. Let's 
coming into a few gentle neck stretches, walk your left hand out to the side, drawing your left ear towards your left shoulder. You might walk that right hand out as well, just having both arms extended here if that's comfortable for you, just making sure you're checking in. Notice, notice what you like here, maybe draw that left hand in, your right hand. I'm just asking you to really pay attention here to what your, your neck needs, rather than me telling you what my neck needs. So just check in, find what feels good. You might begin to gently draw circles with your neck, rolling over to the right, or half circles, I should say, rolling back over to the left. Just find some movement in your neck. Make your way back through center, returning your hands to your knees, and then we're going to stretch over to the right. So this time drawing your right ear towards your right shoulder, and again just find what feels good, whether you're walking both hands out, whether you're walking only your left hand out, maybe lifting your hand up off the mat, front to back. Giving you a lot of freedom here because I really think it's important for us to just really kind of dial in and see what we need. Kind of a blessing of having an at-home yoga practice here. I'm here to offer you guidance, but ultimately it's up to you to find what feels good. So again, if you feel called to make half circles with your neck, you're welcome to do so. Taking your way back through center, we'll just draw a few circles with our nose here, just rotating through the neck. So think of drawing saucer size or like dessert size plate um, circles with your nose, beginning first by going, well actually it doesn't really matter, whatever direction suits you. <laughs> Lots of freedom. Make those circles bigger if that's comfortable in your neck. Rolling back through center and, and then go in the opposite direction. Gradually making those circles bigger. Returning through center, sending your legs straight out in front of you. You're welcome to keep a bend through those knees if that's comfortable. We're actually going to hug that right foot, right knee into chest. So bend through your right knee, extending through your left leg. Draw your left toes towards you. So activate through your left leg and always welcome a bend through that left knee if it's difficult to straighten your leg. As you hug your right knee in towards you, we're going to wrap our left arm around our right knee. Reach behind you with your right arm, and as you inhale, sit up tall. So draw your abdomen in, draw the crown of your head towards the sky. And as you exhale, think about twisting first through your lower stomach, your chest, and finally your head, neck, and gaze might fall out over your right shoulder. Just ensure that you're able to maintain full inhales and exhales in your twist, breathing deeply. A gentle compression for your digestive organs. Making your way back through center, extending the right leg this time, hug that left, left leg in. So again, figure out what feels right with that right leg, welcome a bend in the knee, or if your leg is straight, draw your toes towards you, gentle flex through your right leg. And around your left knee, reach behind you with your left hand, and as you inhale, draw the crown of your head towards the sky. And then beginning to twist gently on your exhale. Just think of rolling up with your twist. So you're twisting first through your lower abdomen, 
gradually twisting deeper through your chest. Finally, maybe your neck and gaze. Extending both legs in front of you. Maybe reach back, release those fleshy bits from your bottom here. Keep a bend through those knees if that's comfortable for you. As you inhale, reach your fingertips towards the sky. And as you exhale, just think of up and over. Imagine you had a big ball on your lap as you reach up and over towards your toes. Gradually relaxing through your head, neck, and shoulders. Hands reach towards your feet. Maybe your hands come to wrap around your feet or maybe simply resting next to your legs. Forehead comes towards your shins. Breathing in your seated forward fold. Breathing into your back body, breathing into the backs of your legs. Relaxing your nervous system. Pressing into the mat with your hands, or the earth, I should say. Walking yourself back up through center. We're going to draw the sole of our right foot into our um, left thigh here. Extending that left arm to the inside of your left leg. And as you inhale, reach up and over with your right hand. So you're anchoring through your right knee, anchoring through your right hip, but stretching deeply through your right side body. Imagine a stretch all the way from the base of your right hip, extending through your right fingertips. If it's comfortable through your head, neck, and gaze, maybe you're spinning your chest towards the sky, looking up. Breathing deeply here. Inhale. And as you exhale, return through center. Bringing your left foot to the inside of your right leg this time. Laying your right arm to the inside of your right leg. As you inhale, reach up and over with your left arm. Anchor your left knee and left hip into the earth as you stretch and extend your left fingertips. Stretching completely into the left side of your body, creating space. Checking in here with your comfort on this side, maybe you're spinning your chest, your gaze, your heart towards the sky. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, return through center. Coming into a wide leg forward fold. So extending your legs out wide, <clears throat> flex through your feet, draw your toes towards you. Placing your hands on the center of the mat. With a tall torso, just start walking your hands forward. Keep a flat back here. As you walk your hands forward, just notice when your back starts to collapse. So at whatever point that is, allow for yourself to begin to fold forward. So you might come down onto your forearms, maybe bringing in a block for a little bit of extra height here. Breathing into the backs of your legs. I chose to begin our practice today with a series of forward folds, just to bring calm to that nervous system that we were talking about earlier. Forward folds are very calming, really helpful to pull us out of that sympathetic nervous system response, fight, flight, freeze, and bring us back into the parasympathetic nervous system where we're really able to access our human brain, 
make good choices, and come into a space of rest. Pressing your hands into the mat, walking yourself back up through center. Grabbing onto underneath your knees, bring your legs into a cross-legged position here. We're just going to begin to rub our palms together. So rubbing, maybe like vigorously, I think that's the word. I want to say rigorously, but I'm pretty sure it's vigorously. So really rub those palms together, create friction, create heat, close down your eyes. Relax through your shoulders. Placing one hand on your stomach, one hand over your heart. Just take pause here. Maybe you'd like to set an intention for your practice today. Breathe into this intention. Feel the energy that your hands are giving your body right now, healing you. When you feel ready, opening your eyes, making your way into a tabletop position. In your tabletop position, your hands are positioned underneath your shoulders, your knees are underneath your hips. Really active through your fingers here. So pressing into the mat with all 10 fingers, in particular index and thumb. Follow your fingers as though they're the hands on a clock with your index pointing at the 12. So you're welcome to tuck your toes or maybe your toes are flat against the mat. Whatever feels most comfortable, draw your navel in. If your wrists are feeling sore or a little bit grouchy today, you're welcome to come down onto your forearms or maybe up onto your wrists. Just check in with what you need. We'll move through a few rounds of cat cow. So on an inhale, drop the belly, gaze lifts, crown lifts. And as you exhale, press away from the mat, round through your back, gaze falls between your back legs. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. Three more times at your own pace, moving with your breath. When you've completed your third round, just return to a neutral tabletop position. Tuck your toes and then begin to slowly peel your hips towards the sky, coming into a downward facing dog. Pedal of your knees. You might anchor through one heel as you bend into the opposite knee. Just find whatever movement feels good in your downward facing dog. Active into your fingertips, insides of your elbows, spin towards one another, head relaxes between your arms. You're welcome to widen or shorten your stance here. Just find what feels stable, find what feels good. Make any adjustments needed. Gradually beginning to make your way into stillness in your downward facing dog for three full breaths. Anchoring your heels towards the mat, but allowing for a generous bend through those knees whatever you need in order to make your back flat here. So maybe you begin by really bending into those knees coming up onto your toes. And then slowly beginning to anchor your heels towards the mat as you straighten your legs, ensuring you maintain a flat back here. Anchor through your left heel, inhale to reach your right leg towards the sky. Square your hips, bow your toes down towards the earth. Begin to bend into your right hip, stacking your right hip over top of your left. Drooping your right toes over your left hip. 
really active into your fingertips here. Square your shoulders to the front of the mat. Ensure you're evenly distributing weight into your left and right hands. And then beginning to draw circles with your hips. With your right hip. Or your right knee, I should say. <laughs> so just bringing some flexibility and movement into your hip. Going in one direction. And then going in the opposite. Return back through center into a three-legged dog. Inhale here. And as you exhale, bend through your right knee. Step it through to meet your hands at the front of the mat. <clears throat> Lower your back knee. Set yourself up here. So ensure that your right knee is tracking over your right ankle. Back toes can be tucked or flat. Tuck toes allows a little extra balance. Tend through your fingertips. Begin to sink into your hips. Inhale to reach your fingertips towards the sky, coming into a low crescent lunge. Really sinking into your hips here. Imagine as though you're just gently tugging your right hip back, left hip draws forward. So just think about squaring those hips to the front of the mat. Breathe here. Keeping your right fingertips pointing towards the sky, dropping your left arm down your left leg. Reversing your crescent lunge here, reaching back perhaps if that's within your practice. Really rooting into the big toe mound on your right foot, the baby toe mound on your right foot. Breathing here. Left hand returns to meet the right. Inhale to find length. And as you exhale, hands come to frame that right foot. Begin to peel your right toes up off the mat as you walk your hands back, setting up for half split. Tend through those fingertips, square your hips to the front of the mat. A micro bend through your right knee. As you inhale, perhaps looking forward. And as you exhale, begin to round through your head, neck, and shoulders. Forehead comes towards your shin. Rolling forward onto your right foot, tend through your um, fingertips, framing that right foot, tuck your left toes, charge up through your left leg. So coming into high lunge leg, but we're actually going to transition into warrior one. So anchoring your weight into that right foot as you shift your left leg forward. Left foot comes at a 45 degree angle, left toes point towards the top left corner of your mat. Begin to bend into your right knee. Inhale to reach your fingertips up towards the sky sinking into your right knee. So make any adjustments you need here. Take your time. So really digging into the knife edge of that left foot, active into your right foot, bending into your right knee. Hips and shoulders are squared towards the front of the mat. Bringing your hands behind you, interlacing your fingers here. So you're welcome to bring your hands into a box position or maybe drawing your palms to touch, knuckles draw towards the earth. As you open through your chest, shoulder blades draw towards one another. So you're welcome to stay here. You might begin to travel forward, coming into humble warrior. As you come forward, your knuckles draw towards the sky. Maybe coming all the way forward, crown of the head reaches towards the earth. Anchoring into your feet here, finding stability in your legs. Breathing. Inhale here. And as you exhale, return through center. And when you're centered, release your hands. Be sure not to slingshot them. Reach your arms overhead, returning to warrior one. We're going to transition ourselves into warrior two here. So opening your arms up on the horizon, spinning that left foot. So your left foot, the knife edge of your left foot is lined up with the short edge of, of the back of your mat, bend into your right knee. So establish your foundation here. Take your time. Shift your hips and shoulders to the long edge of your mat, bend into your right knee. Line up that heel to arch alignment, right heel is slicing a line through your left arch. Opening your arms up on the horizon, float your shoulders, draw your pinkies back, gaze falls out over your fingertips of your right hand. You might take a peek down at those toes on your right foot, ensuring you're able to see the first two toes. Virabhadrasana two. 
As you inhale, flip your right palm towards the sky. Peaceful warrior. Keep a bend through that right knee. Left arm reaches down your left leg. Stretching into your right side body. Inhale here. And as you exhale, coming into extended side angle, right forearm comes to your right thigh, left arm reaches overhead. Left arm can also come to your left hip, spinning your chest and gaze towards the sky, ensuring you're using that right thigh just as a ledge. <laughs> I like to think of it as uh, you're just resting your elbow on a shelf with, that's held up by push, push pins. So just imagining you're not dumping all of your weight into there, but rather just sort of using it as a little, as a shelf that has zero support. Inhale, return to warrior two. Breathe here. Pivoting that left foot to the front of the mat, coming into a high lunge. Inhale, reach your fingertips overhead. Sinking into your high lunge here, beam through that back heel. Really establish that foundation in your right foot, charging through your back leg. Hands come to heart center, coming into a twist here, hooking that left elbow onto the outside of your right knee, spinning your chest to meet your palms, twisting in through your torso. If this twist is too deep, your left hand can come to the outside of your right knee. Maybe your right hand comes to your right hip, twisting towards the right. Breathing into your twist. Return through center. Hands come to frame that right foot. Stepping back, downward facing dog. Paddle it out here. And we'll move into the opposite side. Anchor through that right heel. Inhale to lift your left leg. Bow those left toes towards the mat. Square your hips. Bending into your left knee. Begin to stack your left hip on top of your right. Left toes drip over your right hip here. Shoulders are squared to the front of the mat. Even weight into your left and right arm. Begin to move your um, knee in circles here. Just beginning to find some flexibility and movement in your hips. Just drawing circles with that left knee in one direction and then the other. Returning to a three-legged dog. Inhale here. And as you exhale, bend through your left knee. Step your left foot through to meet your hands at the front of the mat. Lower your right knee. Establish your foundation. Left knee is over top of left ankle. Inhale, reach your fingertips towards the sky. Low crescent lunge. Breathe here. Imagine your hips squaring to the front of the mat, so you might be slightly pulling that left hip back as your right hip draws forward. Extending through your fingertips, but relaxing through the shoulders. Dropping your right arm down your right leg, reaching overhead with your left arm, maybe coming into a slight back bend. Right arm returns to meet the left. As you exhale, hands come to frame that left foot. Begin to walk your hands back. Peel your left toes towards the sky. Coming into half split. Tenting through your fingertips or bringing in blocks for a little extra height as you inhale. Just your gaze falls forward. Begin to feel that stretch into the back of your left leg. And as you exhale, round through your head, neck, and shoulders. Forehead comes towards your shin. Breathing into the back of your left leg. Beginning to walk your foot back to the mat. Hands come to frame that left foot. Charge up through your right leg here. Shifting your right foot forward, setting up for warrior one. So your right foot comes at a 45 degree angle, right toes point towards the right, uh, the top right corner of the mat, bend into your left knee. As you inhale, sweep your arms towards the sky. Hips and shoulders are squared towards the front of the mat. Really establish your foundation here, digging into the knife edge of that right foot. Relax through your shoulders, breathe. Hands 
arms come behind you again interlacing through your fingers this time kind of put the like uh, opposite thumb on front so whatever the thumb feels unnatural allow for that thumb to come on front draw your palms together if they if they so please today draw your knuckles towards the earth open through your heart shoulder blades draw towards one another breathe here and then you make the choice whether you'd like to make the journey or just stay here and if you decide to pitch forward, hinging at those hips, drawing your chest towards your thighs, and maybe traveling past your thighs, crown of the head comes towards the earth. As your knuckles draw overhead, knuckles towards the sky. Breathe. Begin making your way back up through center if you're not there already. And when you reach center, gently release your hands, returning to warrior one. We're going to transition into warrior two here. So dropping your arms along the horizon, pivot that right foot. So your right foot lines up with the short end of your mat. Begin to bend into your left knee. So establish your heel to arch alignment. Hips and shoulders are squared towards the long edge of the mat. Arms reach out. Draw your pinkies back, gaze falls out over your left fingertips, relax through your shoulders. So sometimes it can help to kind of float your arms to just feel what it's like to have relaxed shoulders here. Almost like you're like flying like a bird. Good, bend deeply into that left knee. Take a peek down, ensure you're able to see those left toes. As you inhale, flip your left palm towards the sky, right arm reaches down your right leg, peaceful warrior. Inhale here. As you exhale, extended side angle. Left arm comes to rest on that shelf with only push pins holding it up. Right arm reaches overhead or right hand comes to rest on your right hip, spinning your chest open. Inhale as you return to warrior two. Begin to spin your right toes towards the front of the mat, coming into high lunge here. So take your time. Make any adjustments you need. If you begin to really beam through that right leg, rolling back onto your right toes, sinking into your hips here, high lunge. Drawing your palms to touch at heart center and coming into your twist. So your right hook, right um, elbow hooks onto the outside of your left knee. Spinning your chest towards your thumbs or your palms. Noticing this twist through your torso, through your abdomen. Taking any variation that you need. So maybe your right hand comes to your left knee, left hand comes to your left hip. Breathe into your twist. Return through center, hands come to frame that left foot. Stepping your left leg back, downward facing dog. Come to stillness in your downward facing dog. I'm lowering your knees to the mat, coming into a tabletop position. We're going to find three lions breath here. So with lion's breath, you take an inhale through your nose and as you exhale, open your mouth wide, stick your tongue way, way out, eyes fall towards the crown of your head. Inhale here, exhale, lion's breath. Two more times, inhale, exhale, lion's breath. Inhale, last one, make it good. Walk your hands about six inches forward, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Bend through your knees and walk your feet to meet your hands at the front of the mat. Feet are hip-width distance apart. When you get there, inhale for your halfway lift, your version. So in your version of halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana hands can come to your shins, your thighs, or even your hips. Think of your body in a, the shape of a seven here. Draw your abdomen in, pull your shoulders back. 
You're also welcome to bring blocks in front of you too. That can be helpful for a halfway lift. Being poked by a plant here. <laughs> so in your halfway lift here, breathing in. As you exhale, hinge at your hips, bend your knees generously, Uttanasana, forward fold, hands can come to the mat, or maybe you want to grab onto opposite elbows, allow for your head to relax. You might sway from side to side or front to back. Dropping your hands to the mat, keep a bend through your knees and begin to roll to stand. Coming into Tadasana or mountain, so palms face forward, active into your legs, knees are not locked out. Gentle bend through your knees, but active here, draw your abdomen in, relax your shoulders away from your ears, gaze forward, crown is lifted, breathe. We'll move through three rounds of Surya Namaskare, preparing to move here on an inhale, bend through your knees, fingertips go down to come up. As you exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, your version. As you exhale, place your hands outside of your feet. Step one leg back and then the other. Establish your plank here. Notice if you need to drop your knees. In your plank, imagine a line from the crown of your head to the base of your pelvis. Collarbones are broad. As you exhale, tuck your elbows into the side. Lower your body. So you're welcome to lower your body through chaturanga, inhale for an upward facing dog, or lower your body all the way to the mat, inhale for cobra. Exhale to release, pressing your hands into the mat, charge up through your feet or your knees, returning to uh, sorry, downward facing dog, either through tabletop or through plank pose, meeting in downward facing dog. Inhale here. As you exhale, bend through your knees, make your way to the front of the mat. So walk, step, float, fly, whatever you like. Inhale for halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come to stand, arms reach overhead. Exhale, draw your palms through heart center. Coming into Tadasana. And preparing to move your gentle bend through your knees. Inhale, fingertips go down to come up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands on the mat. Step one leg back and then the other, lowering your body either through chaturanga to upward facing dog or belly to cobra. Inhale. As you exhale, make your way to downward facing dog either through tabletop or plank pose. Inhale in your downward facing dog. As you exhale, bend through your knees, make your way to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, fingertips reach overhead. Exhale, lower your hands through heart center. Tadasana. One more time, bend through your knees. Inhale, fingertips go down to come up. As you exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, your version. As you exhale, place your hands on either side of your feet. Step one leg back and then the other and take your lowering option here, belly to cobra or chaturanga, the upward facing dog. Exhale as you make your way into downward facing dog. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, bend through your knees, make your way to the front of the mat. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come to stand. Arms reach overhead. Lowering your hands through heart center. Awesome. Good. So we're going to come into Vrikshasana tree pose. And we're going to move from tree pose into warrior three. So I'm going to stay at the front of my mat. Or actually, I'll come here. Come into tree pose and then I'm going to transition to the front of my mat so we can move into warrior three together. So I'm going to show you a variation of tree pose here. So establishing your foundation into your left foot. So really noticing those four points of your feet. Establish that balance coming up onto your right toes whenever you feel ready. So you might just bring your, your right foot next to your left. 
opening up through your heart, your um, right knee, keeping your hips and your shoulders squared to the front of the mat. Otherwise, you might bring that right foot to your left calf or grabbing onto your right foot, bringing it to the inside of your left thigh. Being sure to avoid any joints, maybe drawing your palms to heart center, or you're also welcome to use a block as a kickstand, bringing your right foot up onto that block and just practicing that balance here, using your block as a prop, doing whatever arm variation you like, so hands at heart center, maybe extending the branches of your tree, always remembering and bearing in mind that trees sway in the wind just as they are behind me here. So allow yourself to sway, allow yourself to fall over. Be gentle with yourself. This is just practice. Drawing your palms through heart center. Bringing your right knee into chest. So keep a bend through that right knee. Flex through your right foot. Establish your foundation in your left leg. Charge up through your left leg. And we'll begin to hinge forward. Coming into warrior three. So sending your right leg back. Keep a flex through that right foot as though you're pressing against the wall behind you. Pitching your body forward. Hands can stay at heart center. Maybe extending your arms out to the side for airplane arms. Or maybe coming into the full expression of the pose with your hands in front of you. In temple mudra, body is parallel with the earth, really active into that left foot. Flaring through the toes on your right foot can help with balance, as can focusing on a non-moving object called a drishti. Inhale here. As you exhale, returning to stand, palms come to heart center, draw your right knee into chest. Right leg returns to the mat, pedal it out. Share, shake it out, I should say. Find a bit of movement here. Woo -wee. Okay, and we'll transition to the opposite side. So establish your foundation into your right leg this time. Bring your block in if you like it, or of course, move towards the wall. Jeepers, creepers, get after it. Do whatever you need here. Bring your left, come up onto your left toes. So you might draw that left foot in and just stay right here today. As you shift your hips and your, or your um, Shoulders squared to the front of your mat, or maybe you're picking that left leg up and just bringing it wherever you like. Just avoiding joints here. So not against your knee. Hands come wherever is comfortable for you. Drop your shoulders. Soften through your face. So notice what's happening. When we concentrate, all sorts of things happen in our bodies. <laughs> so maybe just take that role of inner observer here and just, just connect with where you're at. See if there's anywhere where you can soften or release just a little and breathe. Awesome. So from your tree pose, if your hands aren't there already, bring your hands to heart center, draw your left knee in. So keeping a bend through that left knee, left, left knee comes to reach forward. And when you feel ready, begin to hinge forward at the hip as your left leg comes back. Flexing through that left foot, imagine as though you're stepping or pushing against the wall. If there's one behind you, if there's not, imagine that there is. Woo. Allow yourself to fall. Establish that foundation. Dig into the toe mound of your right foot. Flare through those left toes. And just check in with where you're at today. Maybe you're bringing your blocks in front of you and you're just practicing here, paralleling your body to the mat. Active through your right leg, charging through your left leg. As you press against that imaginary wall behind you, maybe you're slowly reaching your hands up off your blocks and practicing your balance today. Wherever you are, you're breathing. And maybe you're smiling even. All right, so beginning to bend into that right leg, come to stand. Left knee comes in towards your chest before returning your left foot to the, to the earth. Pedal it out, shake one leg and then the other. Awesome. All right, we're gonna lower ourselves to the mat in a Malasana or a squat. So bring your feet just a little bit more than hip width distance here. Toes flare out at a 45 degree angle. You can bring your palms
palms to heart center. If you know that a squat is not happening for you, you're welcome to just lower your body into a seated posture, whatever is comfortable. You might invite a block underneath your bottom for your bottom to land on as you fall into your squat. Whatever works for you, begin to lower yourself towards the mat. I kind of shift back and forth as I come down. So check in with yourself here. Maybe you're staying up on your toes today. That's quite all right. But if you're able to, see if you're able to send that weight into the backs of your feet. So predominantly the back of your foot are your heels. And the way to check in with this is to give me a little wave with your toes. I mean, I can't see you, but if I could, I'm waving back. <laughs> so press your elbows into the insides of your knees, draw your palms to touch, sternum comes to meet your thumbs. Lift through your chest, relax through your shoulders. Maybe close down your eyes and breathe here. Releasing your hands, bring your hands behind you just to support you as you come to seat on your bottom. Bring your feet forward a little bit more than hip width distance here. Hands come behind you to support you and just move through a few rounds of windshield wipers here. So drop your knees to the right or the left. Release through your hips, switching over to the opposite side. How about one more time on each side? Awesome. Position yourself long ways on your mat and bring yourself down to your back. <clears throat> Take your time. Draw your knees into your chest when you get there. Give yourself a hug. Ah, knees come into your chest. Anchor your lower back body against the mat. Maybe you're rocking from side to side. Feel that gentle massage on your lower back body. Release your shoulders. Soften through your face. Roll through center. Awesome. Feet come to touch the mat. Keep a bend through your knees. Sending your arms out to the side in a T or a cactus shape position here. Palms facing down. Dropping your knees over to the right. Coming into a twist here. So notice what this is like for you. Maybe you're picking your right foot up extending it to the outside of your left knee, just to draw that left knee a little bit closer towards the mat to intensify the stretch. Maybe your gaze falls out over your left arm, anchoring that left shoulder into the mat, breathing here. If your right foot is on top of your left knee, release that now. Draw your knees up through center. Head, neck, and gaze return through center as well. Make any adjustments needed and then dropping your knees over to the left. Check in on this side. Maybe you want to go a little deeper, pulling down on that right knee with your left foot. Maybe your gaze falls out over your right arm. Anchor that right shoulder into the mat. Breathe. If your left foot is on top of your right knee, releasing that now, rolling back through center. Drawing your knees into chest. <clears throat> Anchor your lower back body against the mat. Open your knees up, reaching through. So lift your head, neck, and shoulders up, reaching through your arms, grabbing onto the outsides of your feet. Release your head, neck, and shoulders to the mat. Happy baby. So you're drawing your feet towards the earth, draw your elbows, um, sorry, your knees in towards your armpit. So active in your arms here. Imagine as though you're standing on the ceiling or maybe you're doing a squat on the ceiling. Either way, your feet are flexed. If this is too much or too intense, 
you're welcome to grab onto your calves or maybe the backs of your knees, drawing your knees in towards your armpits, relaxing through your shoulders. If you feel like you need a little more in your happy baby, you're welcome to lengthen one leg and then the other or both. Just checking in with where you are today, anchor your lower back body into the earth. Breathe here. Maybe you're rocking from side to side. Maybe you're in complete stillness. Gently releasing one leg and then the other. Keep a bend through your knees as your feet return to the mat. Bring your arms alongside you. Fingertips just come to graze your heels. <clears throat> feet are hip width distance apart, pressing into the mat with your palms, pressing into the mat with your feet, beginning to lift your hips and your lower back up off the mat, coming into bridge. So press your hips towards the sky, pressing your feet into the mat. Imagine as though you were pinching a block between your knees. So keep those knees parallel. And if you'd like to come into a bind in your bridge here, maybe you're interlacing your fingertips underneath your back, rocking your shoulders towards one another as you open through your chest, knuckles draw towards your heels. Wherever you are, you're breathing. If you're in a bind, releasing your hands now, roll your shoulders back, hands come alongside you, and slowly taking as many breaths as you like, return your back to the mat. Notice what it's like to articulate your spine, rolling each vertebrae one by one. When your back body returns to the mat, walking one leg long and then the other, making your way into your final resting Shavasana. So extend your legs long. Maybe your toes are flopping out to the side. Maybe you're taking up a whole ton of space here just because you can. Coming into a five-pointed star, if that's comfortable for you, your palms flip open towards the sky, fingertips curl in. Rock your head from side to side, maybe establish the center point of your head here. You might press into the mat with your head just to pick your shoulders up and pull them down with intention. Release your back on the mat. Coming into a space of stillness. Coming into a space that allows your body to really absorb all that you've just done.
beginning to create tiny movements with your fingers and toes. You might gently rock your head from side to side. With an open heart and a relaxed body, returning to the intention that you set at the beginning of your practice today. Drawing your palms to touch and drawing your palms to your third eye point, the space in between your forehead, in between your eyebrows, applying a small amount of pressure to this command center of your brain, the space where emotional and concrete thoughts are able to rest, where intuition, illumination, and creativity come alive. And with your hands resting on your third eye center, I will ask you to dwell on the idea of a supreme, infinite power producing the results you desire. This power is the creative power of the universe. It is responsible for everything coming into focus. By trusting in this power that is accessible to all of us, we open ourselves to receive the assistance we desire, trust in intention, and accept the guidance that comes our way. Inhaling deeply. And as you exhale fully, I will close our practice with a namaste. I hope you all have a beautiful day. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.